YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gum and Raw. So today we're going to be doing the spray painting stage on this Audi A3. So we've got a new bonnet, a new bumper and a repaired fender. So we'll be uh, spraying and blending that fender over there. Um, so this video here is actually dedicated to John from the UK. So um, he sent me a few questions uh, on Instagram and he's been asking in the comments section on some of my videos about my thoughts on non-sanding primer or wet on wet um, which is what you guys in the US usually call sealer so if you come to Australia and you start talking about sealer people will think you're talking about that stuff inside there same sealer but so yeah I've said it a few times in the past but if you're new around here when we say wet on wet we re we're referring to what you call in the States, sealer. So anyway, um, look, I've made a few mentions to it in some of my previous videos and sometimes I'll avoid it, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you've just got to use it. Like this job here, this job's down here to go today. So I don't have any choice but to use wet on wet primer and just paint the whole job at once. In a perfect world, um, look, in a perfect world we would be using all top of the line clear coats and all that kind of stuff so it wouldn't matter as much so one thing that i've found is like when i use um wet on wet primers if you're not careful you can uh get a little bit of pinch back um like a few hours later or after a bake or the next day you can come back and the job will lose a lot of its gloss so um look a few ways to avoid that is to give it a really good flash off time so that's why I'm gonna get the wet on wet down on here and then I'll be doing the masking so that definitely helps um, but on the other hand you really should be using slow hardener so that obviously slows it down um, another thing you should try to do is like less is better so you really want that um, really thin film build of your wet on wet primer that's one thing that I've found anyway so John was saying that he was using Roberlo. Um, look, I'm using the Standox wet on wet primer here. And I used to always use Glazerit. So prior to coming here, it was always Glazerit. And I swear their wet on wet primers were actually much better than the Standox. Um, for whatever, like when I first moved to this workshop, I didn't even, like I used their wet on wet primers a few times. And then I was like, nah, man, I really don't like it. Um, so I stopped using it. Um, because for whatever reason it just I don't know you, you get that orange peel you get that grittiness to it sometimes if you're not careful like so if you were to spray the inside of that bonnet first with your wet on wet primer and then do the outside you would get crap all through the outside so it's like even with the slow hardener it would still sometimes dry too quick um, but yeah as I say like that glazerit stuff it, it was so smooth it would go on like clear like clear coat um, and then another thing that really helps is using a good quality HS clear coat over the top of it um, I found it's just much more forgiving so like what we use here is sort of like it, they call it actually a hybrid clear so it's like it's middle of the range it's not that well actually for standox it is um it's the cheapest standox branded clear so it's the entry entry level standox so um, obviously there is cheaper clears out there but for a standox brand and clear it's the cheapest they have so it's definitely not the best so when you go up to like the um the proper hs's and the low voc clears you're going to be getting um a, a much thicker clear and it's a lot more forgiving i've found so as i say some of some of the orange peel that you'll get in your wet on wet with the good clears you you'll just be able to pound that clear on and it will forgive if you know what i mean like you yeah you won't see it because that that clear coat just holds such a nice gloss and it'll flow out and then it'll yeah sort of hide the fact that the wet on wet wasn't down perfectly <coughs> so we'll give it a good blow down and then get some of this wet on wet down anyway so yeah, look, there's definite, there's definite advantages to using wet on wet. Don't get me wrong. Like, I do love it for, for stuff like this. See, the inside of this bonnet here, I didn't even, um, I didn't even sand it down. So, 
Yeah, don't get this video, don't take this video the wrong way. I'm not like having a, a complaint about wet on wet. I do like it. And even this Stanox wet on wet, like I've come to appreciate it more than when I first came here. So what I was using when I first came here, I was using fast hardener in it because I came from uh, Glazerit, whereas you could use fast hardener in it. So that's part of the reason I was getting grit in it, I think now. Um, but yeah, coming to this Stanox stuff, you really do have to use the slow hardener in it. Um, and yeah, just really observe those flash off times. So, you know, today's actually a bit of a cooler day. So that's like, I don't know, probably like 25 degrees outside. I've got the booth cranked up to about 30 at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep it nice and warm when I'm spraying the wet on wet primer and then it can flash off nice and quickly. Um, yeah, look, so John, John's having some issues with his and look, he's in the cold UK weather and it's probably only coming into your winter as we're actually coming into summer over here. So that's only gonna make um, things worse, isn't it? You know, that's what I was saying. You really wanna make sure it's as, as dry as possible before you go and put your base coat over. Um, <clears throat> what else can I say about wet on wet primer? That, that was basically this whole video. I was thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if I'll be able to stay on topic for the whole video. So yeah, try to make sure it's as dry as possible before you base coat it up. So I think he was saying that um, he didn't even have a heater in his booth, which sounds a bit, a bit rough in uh, UK. So yeah, I mean, to me, if, if it was like anything below 20 degrees, you'd probably want to leave you when I'm wet for a couple of hours nearly, you know? Um, and then maybe even nib it if there's any bits of dust in it and then go over the top. So yeah, I don't know, maybe even just look into some simple things like upgrading the uh, clear coat that you're using. You might be able to get a better quality clear and find that that sort of helps um, hide some of the imperfections that you're uh, getting uh, and some of that dye back. So that, I don't know, that's a possibility to look into there, John. That's another thing, always start on the outside of, like if you're doing new bonnets or something like that, do the outside first. I've found that you get much cleaner jobs doing it that way. But as I say, I always used to do the inside first. And you just, less is better. You want to get it on nice and thin. So I've got a 1.3 mil fluid tip on this FLG5. Crank the pressure up.
actually just remembered um, when I do my wet on wet primer stage, I always, when I'm doing the inside of a bonnet, I always start from the bottom up. So what can happen is if you start from here when you're doing the inside, that overspray comes and hits here and it'll, um, it'll just turn into a real mess, like a sand bit of dry overspray. And um, yeah, I've seen people have to respray them before because they just look terrible. So you can avoid that if you start from the bottom because that way the overspray's got something wet to land into and it'll sort of melt in. Um, so yeah, that's the way I went down and, and you'll notice that it's, it's flashing off nice and quickly because I do have the, the heat cranked up in the booth. Um, and, and also the way I sprayed it, so that's 1.3 mil. I've even um, used the ANI, I think it was the R150 or R160 in the 1.2 mil and had really good results with it. Um, I'm actually using that gun for clear, uh, for like spray outs now, so for that reason I, I don't use it anymore, but I might actually have to dust it back off and um, bring it back in the booth. But yeah, in saying that, like 1.4 overkill. I find so you really want less is better with your wet on wet so as you see there that's quite a thin film build and look I, I think we'll be fine on this one here but so there was a job that I, a couple of jobs I did last week like I, I tried doing a Benz it was like an E-class Benz a really big bonnet and I kind of knew it was going to happen but it didn't really bother me so yeah what ended up happening is it sort of died back and the orange peel wasn't that great as I say, because it was like a, a too big of a panel for me to really comfortably do. And also on that one, I, I think I used the I used the ANI R160 1.3, which really pounds the paint on. So I probably should have gone the 1.2 with the R160. Um, sorry, F160. That's the full size ANI gun. Um, so yeah, as I say, like certain guns do spray differently even though you might say oh it's all 1.3 you use 1.3 but they some do put more material on even though they're the same tip size so as i say this flg5 in 1.3 really does get a nice fine finish but um yeah the ani with the 1.3 will go and put a lot more on so, what else are we going to say about wet on wet primers? I hope I covered most of the stuff that you could ever want to ask about wet on wet primers anyway. But look, on the other hand, like, so John did say that he was using uh, Roberlo. I've never used it. I've never used that exact brand. So I can't say 100% if any of the stuff I've even mentioned holds true for that brand. But we did actually use some of the Roberlo primers years ago um, in one of the body shops I work in. We used some of their clear coats as well, and I remember it being great stuff, to be honest. Yeah, we actually loved it, eh, where I used to work. So I've got no doubt that it will be a pretty good, pretty good quality product. It's Spanish, the Roberlo, from memory, yeah. Made in Spain. But, um... Yeah, as I say, like, less is better. That's the biggest thing I will find. And especially this John guy, like, he's from the UK. So, um, that's probably the biggest thing I can tell you. Like, less is more. Like, so crank the pressure up on your gun to get that really nice, fine atomization. So, I usually go two bar with that gun. But you may have even noticed when I was doing the wet on wet on this, I went over two bar. Um, and as I say, that's just to get that fine atomization, a thin film build, because really all you need is just the, the thinnest amount of wet on wet that you can physically get while still having it covered. And yeah, come, like, so you don't want any of your original e-coat showing through. You don't want any of the original primers showing through. Um, but yeah, less is better. Also, they do recommend using slow with this one. Like now, it might be one of those things that with the Roberlo, you might be able to use fast. I don't know. You'll either have to check the technical data sheets or ask your paint rep. I think I might actually put a little bit of wet on wet primer just inside this edge here. There was a touch of uh, bare metal up there too. I might, might put something over that too. Yeah, so they want this car to go today, and it's a bit of a push because I've been I've been waiting for half the day for this spray booth. Yeah, the other guy's been in the booth. 
Yeah, well, you do what you can, mate. Doing my best. But look, to be fair, it's, it's been good to be busy. I'd rather this problem than too quiet. It, it gets boring when you're too quiet. I know there's lots of people around the world that. Jeer. All right, guys. So my GoPro battery is actually just dying on me, so I'm not sure exactly how far we got to. And in the talking about wet on wet stage here, but I did put a couple of little thin bits of wet on wet just over the cut throughs on this fender here. So there was some bare metal here. And on the kind of color that this is, I didn't even worry about putting any thinners over it. I also, yeah, I, I didn't load it up, so it should be totally fine. That's another thing about wet on wet. If you go and put it on like really heavy, and then only do half a panel i found that you can get like a bit of a when you even put your base coat down you'll get like a bit of an edge you can see the step down so as i say if you spray a little bit of thinners over that edge um that'll sort of help it but as i say this is on so thin that i, I don't think that that's going to happen on this job here so we'll do that fender first because i can still feel there's a bit of heat in this booth so I turned the temperature down, just as I came in. So I don't want the temperature up at above 30 while I'm spraying my face coat. So you just gotta be a bit careful with this blend here. So even with that low pressure, we're already getting a little bit of overspray there, but it's not the end of the world. As I did tell you before, we've got a good colour match. We're going edge to edge over to the other fender anyway, so it can't be too bad. Crank it up to two bars. So I've found, I've been playing around, I've been trying a few different methods, and I've found that these days that you're best off doing the edges first. Because if you do them last, you sort of you change the look of the metallic on the edges. Let's do the edges first, and then I'll do the outside first, and then I'll do the inside second. So I want to get that first coat on nice and wet. And now that it's, it's warming up here in Perth, I'll go bottom to top, top to bottom. So I've got the Pro Light Gunman Edition TE10 as the air cap. I reckon this is probably the best air cap to spray this um, this Sando Blue with. I've used, I've used loads of different spray guns to spray the Sando Blue with, but I've found TE10 1.3 is probably the best in my opinion anyway. It's got a nice full fan, not too small, not too big. So yeah, full fan, super pressure, and full fluid. That's how I run. That's how I rock it. So as I said, I'm, I went from the bottom to the top, and then this is my drop coat. You notice I hold the gun back a little bit. And you want to go nice and slow. Nice tight overlap. It's not drying on me too quick, which is good. So 
that's a pretty forgiving colour, these darker ones. Sometimes I'm like the silvers, or the light metallic, I might even go to do double drop. So I might even do that and then go for another drop coat, depending on how it looks. Sometimes it needs it, sometimes it doesn't. But now we'll go and do the inside. good man looking good now I just got to do that bumper that's not going to be enough I've got a little bit more in the pot out there I'm going to go grab it I might flick that cam off and I'll see you when we're ready to clear I'll do that bumper off cam Radio guys, so back to this job here, we've got the clear coat in the gun and I've got a little bit of a concoction in this other gun here. So what this one is, it's AK350 or fade out thinner. So it's really, really thin clear. So I put like 20 mils of clear in with, uh, that would probably be 200 mils of, um, of fade out thinner. So yeah, probably I'd say like 10% clear and what that does is it, it gives that sort of semi-gloss finish of the inside really well actually i've been doing this sort of in the last few weeks and i've been getting some good results with it so if i was to just leave it in base coat it would not quite be glossy enough and if i was to put full clear it'd be too glossy so rather than having to mix up a matte clear I find this is absolutely perfect. So you're still getting that little bit of durability with the clear coat, yet you get the correct gloss level. I found that, I used to do this years ago, but what I used to do is like, I would put this on in the second coat, so in between coats of the outside, and I was finding that it, like, it would land on the outside and, and give me a funky, sort of like a silicon so I stopped doing it so I, I had an idea to do it again but do it first as long as you do this first it's okay so we use the Chromax AK350 fade out thinner and I can see already that that's that really nice semi-gloss finish and that replicates the factory finish perfectly Yeah, I'm wrapped with that, man. That looks perfect. Like, I went out and had a look at the inside of that panel before I came in the booth, and that is identical. Or close enough to identical, anyway. So anyway, let's get the clear coat down. Stand up, standard clear. Government Edition Pro Light TE20 one point, oh sorry, Pro, not Pro Light. TE20 1.3.
looking nice and glassy so far. I can see my reflection is nice and crisp and clean. If it's all orange peely, my reflection will be all muddy, but it's looking pretty good so far. So we'll give that a few minutes while that flashes off. We'll get these two panels done. I'm not going to stop on this job here, I've got the boots cranked up, I'm just going to keep going until I'm done then. I'll give it 10 minutes flash off, but I've still got to clean all those gums out. So yeah, between spraying and baking that is, so I'll give it the 10 minutes after spraying. But i just got to get this shit done now. I use fast hardener as I usually do. As I said before, they, they want this car to go today, so sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, man. I love that Bon Jovi song. Ain't no use in complaining when you've got a job to do. I think it's Bon Jovi, I could be wrong actually now I think of it. Or maybe it was Brian Adams. I'm sure there's someone listening that, that knows the song. Might be able to tell me. Ain't no use in complaining when you got a job to do. Yeah, I think it was Brian Adams. Summer of 69. to put my last coat when it's all laying flat so it can flow out I like to get a nice amount of material on especially on the bonnet you want, you want a nice amount of uh, film build there I guess big chunkers in this one man real big chunkers <laughs> real big chunkers in this bonnet man but look that's that's part of the reason why I sometimes avoid using wet on wet because it just happens sometimes
Yeah, man, there's quite a few chunkers in this one. <laughs> oh, well, to get that on the big job. Look, I mean, it's not too bad, the finish is nice, but as I say, like sometimes when you use the wet on wet, man, you just get little bits of stuff flying out from the inside onto the outside, so I don't know, man, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's done. Yeah, as I say, man, look, it's, it's not the best job I've done, it's definitely not the worst job I've done, um, but it's done. It's, <laughs> that's about all you can say. There's the Gunman Edition GTI Pro CE 21.3, and we'll have a look at that finish. I say it's actually pretty nice. Look, apart from those big chunks of dust, I think we've done all right, really. Like, that's probably better than I usually get, to be honest, with the wet on wet, like, I'm going to start doing that from now on, I'm going to start using that 1.3 FLG5, hold on, I'm caught down here so I can't move, um, so, yeah, I don't know, look, it's, those, those big chunkies, they are what they are, man, like, they'll buff out, they will literally buff out, and I'm not sure if you can quite pick it up, but it's right up here, it's a, a big chunk, but hey, look, I've always said, I would rather five big bits of dust than 1,000 little bits. And I've got, look, maybe five to 10 big bits, and that's about it. Let's see if we can get a bit of a closer look. I, I took the camera out of the case, so see if you can see, like, there is those sort of, there's a big one there. We caught up on that one. There's a big one over there somewhere too. Um, but yeah, as I say, like, there's just, look, there's a handful of big ones. There's not a million small ones. A million small ones, obviously, going to take longer to buff out. As far as this goes, it's probably not even going to take that long to buff, to be honest. It probably won't take that long at all. So as I say, I'm going to go clean out all those guns. And um, look, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Um, again, I would like to say a big thanks to John there from the UK. You always watch my videos and I do appreciate it. And I also do appreciate everybody else watching my videos. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's you guys that have made this channel what it is. And um, yeah, until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out.